How's it going guys? Odds and Ends RC here. If you like, please subscribe. In today's video, we are going to be putting a track bar on the Cheap China All-Star chassis I bought. I uh, reviewed it in the last video. Uh, it's pretty much an SCX-102 clone. Uh, it's a little cheaper in some aspects. But for one, it does not have a uh, track bar. Some people call it pan hard bar. And it causes steering issues. Like so. See when you go down on the suspension, it turns the wheels a half inch one way. Um, if you have an older style SCX-10, the servo is mounted on top of the pumpkin. And it has a four link front suspension. So when the servo goes up and down, the tires stay straight. So you do not need a track bar. But if you have a CMS, a chassis mounted servo, that has the bar coming from the servo down to the axle, uh, you will need a track bar for it to work properly. I, I see a lot of people mess that up. Uh, they don't get that right. I see a lot of new kits that come out that aren't set up right. Uh, another thing I see is a lot of people, when they get a new SCX-10-2, uh, th there's a link missing. It's only a three-link front end, and they think there's supposed to be a fourth link in there, and they'll buy the fourth link, put it in there, and it binds the suspension all up. That uh, upper link is missing for a reason. This axle should float back and forth when the suspension goes up and down and if you have a four link set up in it it will not let it float so in this video I'm going to try to explain and install a track bar in this cheap chassis and uh, get it working properly uh, this is the uh, original SCX-10 2 front end and you'll see the track bar is on this side and on this cheap china clone you can see it it's right here it's on the opposite side so we're going to start off by switching switching it from one side to the other and then I'll be turning the servo around also I bought these STRC shock tower mounts uh, it has the track arm bar mount on the new, you can see it there, on the new tower. The China Clone one does not have the mount, and we need the mount. Uh, these are about $18. If you wanted to buy the axial plastic ones, I think you'd get them for about $10 shipped, but I went ahead and went with the metal ones. But, alright, uh, let me start off by switching the hubs around to get the pan hard bar on the opposite side and taking out the extra link and then we will go from there alright guys I got the C hub switched around to where the uh, track arm mount bar is on the passenger side now and I'm getting ready to move remove the passenger side upper link I was wanting to show you first that with all four links installed that this axle is solid you cannot move it back and forth and for a track arm setup to work properly the axle needs to be able to kind of slide back and forth a little bit um, to be able to work properly but let me get this upper link out and let me switch out the shock towers and then we will go from there alright guys I got the track bar mounted I uh, just used a link I had laying around, and I've got a bunch of uh, RC four-wheel drive rod ends, a bunch of different sizes I just keep on hand just for builds, and then the uh, little grub screws for putting them on. I always keep a bunch on hand. I always keep a bunch of links on hand, too, just for scratch builds and stuff like this, but... Uh, depending on what body I put on here, I might probably be changing this later. But uh, my application called for about 95 millimeters from uh, one end to the other up there. 
and uh, that's got me about centered. I'm pretty close. Uh, if you, another thing to note, this thing has 95 millimeter shocks on it. And I notice a lot of people, they buy a new SEX 10 2, they'll put taller shocks on it. I think uh, they come with 90s and they'll probably buy, you know, 100s or 110 millimeter shocks because they want to jack it up. Well, anytime you raise the height on one of these that has a track bar, it throws the track bar off. If so you raise one higher, you need to make this longer. If you lower one shorter, you need to make that shorter. You just gotta kinda play with it till the axle sits in the middle again. Um, I'll be changing this later because I'm gonna be putting a Jeep body on this thing, but I had to add a spacer on this to space it out a little bit. So it will clear this mount here. And you kind of want to keep this straight with the with the axle. You don't have to be perfect, but you got to be pretty close. And, you know, you got to have room for your uh, servo arm, too. But, yeah, I got it pretty good. Doesn't hit anything. Doesn't hit the axle. The shocks goes all the way down. But, uh... Yeah, let me get the rest of this back together, and I'll add the steering arm and explain some more. Alright guys, got her pretty much done. Uh, I could have spent a lot more time on it, but I I gotta take this back apart again. Uh, I'm gonna be fitting a Jeep hard body in an upcoming video. So I'll we'll have to kind of change the geometry a little bit of all this, but just for purposes of showing you how to do it. Uh, I got her together. You can see now the tires don't turn a half inch one way whenever the suspension goes down. It's kind of what you're looking for. Um, basically, you just got to play with it a little bit, just depending on your shock height. Um, you know, like I said, and then you're going to notice when the suspension is all the way up that it may look like it leans a hair one way, your shocks, and then when your suspension's all the way down, it may look like they lean a hair the other way. That's perfectly normal. Uh, basically, you're looking for, you want the shocks to be straight up and down when the truck sits at its normal position, you know, when it has the battery and everything in it. You're looking for your shocks to be up and down. And your steering arm, and then your track arm, you kind of want them at the same angle. They don't have to be perfect, but if you need to raise your servo a little bit or put a spacer down here, or you just got to kind of do what you need to do for custom builds. And if you're coming up a hair too long or too short on your rod ends, uh, remember you can always use little three millimeter nuts. Uh, the real ones, you know, they have lock nuts on them. So, you know, it, it don't matter if you have to... Use a couple nuts on each end to get you just a hair longer or, you know, shorter. If you need a shorter rod or if you need to trim on a rod end a little bit just to get you shorter. But um, this is the way a proper suspension should be. should have a three link set up on the front with the track arm bar. Um, I know it's kind of complicated. I hope I didn't lose lose any of you along the way here, but... It uh, just takes some, some fiddling. And once you kind of figure out how, what you need to do to make these things work right, then it's easy. But uh, uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, let me know down below. If I kind of lost you or you're kind of confused, uh, just shoot me a question and I'll answer it the best I can. Um, just watch out for an upcoming video. I'm going to be doing one of those Jeep JK hard bodies, those China hard bodies. Uh, I'll be showing the proper way to mount one of them to uh, the S610 2 chassis. And uh, when I do that, I'm going to have to readjust all this stuff. So I'm going to be running shorter shocks and then I'll be adding uh, shorter links everywhere. Get rid of these long links, add some shorter links. Uh, just kind of changing some things up. But yeah, I hope to help you. Hoped I helped you out a little bit and didn't confuse you, but it's just... Oh, 
Get another shot of it here. Just shot of the bottom. You can see I get rid of that upper link. But yeah. Um, let me know what you think. And if I totally lost everybody, I'll try to make a better video explaining it better. But uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.